taming the tongue. We've heard this scripture over and over again, and, and, but, but as we prepare our hearts and minds to go fishing, Brother James gives us some advice that we should take to heart, that we should absorb into our inner being, our mind, our body, and our spirit. In the text read this morning, we heard the epistle of James. This epistle was speaking, uh, this particular text was speaking to the Jewish followers of Jesus. And now to us as readers and hearers. We are told in this letter, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, to tame our tongues. Tame this restless evil, urges the author, who is said to be probably the brother of Jesus. But today you may ask, well, why? Why should we tame our tongue? I want to speak my piece. Yes, you want to state your opinion or your view. You want to give your points of views. You want to say what's on your mind. And we have been hearing, <laughs> Church, uh, we have been hearing a lot of that lately from one person that we, that should quickly come to mind. And, 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 and you, 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 never, you never know what he's going to say out of his mouth. Whatever our political affiliation is, Donald Trump in the White House should bring about some concerns. Whatever our political affiliation is, whatever, Republican, Democrats, liberal, whatever, we should have a little bit of concern. We should think about what if. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm going to leave you to ponder on that what if. Woo, what if he makes it to the white? Okay, what if. This taming of the tongue. Why should we tame our tongue? As children, most of us grew up knowing that to ask why to our parents or any adult definitely should not come out of our mouth. But I'm so glad today that this is no longer a life-threatening matter, a painful matter, because if we did that, we would be mm, 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 on the floor. But it's no longer a life-threatening matter. It's acceptable to ask why and expect an answer. I don't know about you, but I like the answer to my whys, because it's important to know how, whatever it is, how it's going to affect me, affect my surroundings, affect my family. How is it going to affect me? So church, why should we control our tongue, our speech, our words? Well, it's all in the text. Well, because, because what we say can influence others. Because though the tongue uh, is a small member of the body, it's powerful. Let me say that again. It's powerful because it is a fire because it is a little world of evil in itself, because it is a miniature time bomb waiting to go off, because it defiles the whole body, it stains the whole body, because it sets on fire the circle of nature and is itself set on fire by hell because it keeps burning, because it roars with contention, strife, division, and confusion, 
because it's deadly. Okay, pastor, you say, now the why turns to how do we control our tongue? Well, Brother James tells us that every species of beast and bird or reptile and sea creatures can be tamed and has been tamed by, has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, that restless evil tongue full of deadly Poison. You know, we say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can't hurt me. Nah, bah, bah, no, delete now. That is not necessarily so. We used to run around in the schoolyard. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words cannot hurt me. We used to do that all, the, you know, da, 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 da. Because we thought, I don't care what you say about me, it's not going to, yes, wrong, that, it hurts. It hurts. And the reason we say it is because it hurts, and we don't want nobody to know it hurts, because that's why we say sticks and stones will break our bone, but nothing. Okay. It hurts. You see, we not only let evenness arise from our tongue, through our speech, with our tongue, that same tongue that, that spurts out evenness, we turn around and we bless the Lord. And with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessings and cursing. We say what's on our mind that slanders others. We gossip. We engage in the he said, she said. Now, I'm not talking about you all. I'm talking about the other United Methodist Church and other Baptist people that are sitting in church this morning. I'm not talking about you all, so don't get mad with the pastor. Okay. So, so we engage in the he said, she said. We don't like what someone has done, is doing, so we find ears to whisper in. You know, we, we, we sometimes see people pulling people to the side. You know, if you take a look at it sometimes, you see people, you know, hobble in a corner. You know, you see people be, you know, going behind closed doors. You know, we see that. They, they, they want an ear to whisper in, to try and turn others against them, whomever it is that they are talking about. We become a part of the problem instead of a solution with our complaining. We bless the Lord, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God, our own brothers and sisters in Christ. According to James, we should not do this. This is inconsistent. This is straddling the fence. Jesus would say this is hypocrisy. So how do we restrain our tongue, our words, if we can't do it on our own. There is only one sure way. Let your requests be known to God. God creates. God creates. So we pray to God. We ask God. God create in me a pure heart. We cannot tame our tongue without divine intervention. You know, not brother and sister intervention, not husband intervention, intervention, not wife intervention, not, you know, going and listening to, you know, the service on, on, on the radio, you know, not going to other churches, only by, through divine intervention. Because what we say comes from our hearts to our tongue. When Christ governs us, we can govern our hearts and our tongues. And we need to know that we are held accountable for what comes from our heart to our tongues. Matthew 12, 30, 36 tells us that we will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word that we have spoken. Matthew 5, 8 tells us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Have you ever heard or, or experienced, you can't do that. You're never going to amount to anything. 
You are so worthless. Words like this is a blow to one's self-esteem, and it's long-lasting. It's long-lasting. If we restrain our tongue, it can direct our whole life into what is acceptable in God's sight. If we don't restrain our tongue, it will get us in trouble time after time after time after time in the here and now and on the day of judgment. And I'm about to close. I, I, I want to share with this with you. I, I, and this is sum, summarize it all. I read this um, in, online or in a book or whatever. It's from an unknown author. And I, I want to share it with you. Once a woman told a very ugly, scandalous story about her old pastor, which spread it very fast through the whole assembly and created problems e even far away. Soon after, the woman got very sick repented and confessed her lies. When she was well again, she went to her pastor and begged for his forgiveness. Surely I will forgive you, said the old pastor friendly, but because you hurt me so much, I would like to ask you now for a favor. Oh, I'd love to, the woman cried out, relieved. He tells her, go home and slaughter a black chicken. Pull out all its feathers, even the smallest, and don't lose any of them. Then put the feathers into a basket and bring them to me. The woman thought it was an old custom and did as she was told. After a short while, she came to the pastor with a basket filled with the black feathers. So, he said, now, go slowly through the village, and every three steps, you scatter a few feathers, and then you climb up on the church tower where the bells are hanging and throw the rest down into the village. Then come back to me. After an hour, the woman returned to the pastor with the empty basket. Great, he said friendly. Now, go through the village and collect all the feathers back into your basket and make sure that none are missing. The woman looked shocked and said, that's impossible. The wind has distributed the feathers in all directions. Well, the pastor said, you see, it's the same with your ugly words. Who can collect them again and take them back and let the harm be undone? Think about those small black feathers before you spread the words like this again. Every time we start to let our tongue wagging, remember these black feathers. Remember, brother and sisters, that our tongues can ignite a raging inferno that no one can extinguish because its flames spreads. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. amen.